You're listening to a Skewed Orbit original podcast. Time, weather, and... Hi, friends. Welcome back to the Rachel LaFour Show. It's time for the big reveal. You guys know Mama was promoting this live podcast, and what an absolute day and dream it was. This was so much fun, and I'm really excited for you to hear this podcast, especially for those of you that are interested in plant-based medicine, that regularly use cannabis, that are cannabis curious, that have felt shame around it. Uh, and then certainly for all of my like legalize it, like my, just my, my fans, I, um, I think you're really, really going to enjoy this episode. It's interesting that it really centered a lot more around the idea of shame, especially shame with women and like mommy wine culture with, which y'all know I have, I have some notes. I've got some notes on that. And just the distinction and, and also like, what does it mean to be a mother and an activist? What does it mean to be a mother and an entrepreneur? What does it mean to even keep secrets? You know, we talk a lot about that and how as women and uh, older women and business owners, there's a lot of like secret keeping out of, again, shame, not wanting to be judged. And that the more that we open up and we tell our stories, we realize that we are all the fucking same. You're right. Um, we all have different challenges and, and different cards we've been dealt. But ultimately, you know, at the the real human level, we're all experiencing a lot of similar frequencies and, and things that go on. So this conversation is so exciting. This all took place right at Cal Verde Naturals. It is a female-owned dispensary in Boston, Mass. I sat down with their owner, Kelly Tomasello, and her COO, Emma Thurston. Please enjoy. <laughs> First of all, thank you so much. Thank you. This thank is so you. exciting. This is our first podcast. Yes. Yeah, very much. Okay, yeah. very very much so. Okay, good. Well, I'll be your shaman today. I will lead awesome. you through. This is all going to be great. So, okay, in Mazel, we're at one year. Yes? Yes. Okay, this is a big, this is a huge milestone. Big time. Is this been... I want to, I'm going to, we're going to dive into everything. Okay. And I want to know about like your relationship and how you guys came to be and the strengths and weaknesses and how this all works together and all that fun stuff. I'm assuming that this has been a brainchild for you for a while or were you just like, ah, and yeah. like kind of stumbled into this, right? Um, yeah, no, it was like a solid five years, I think. Okay. But from, from, uh, inception, I guess you would say okay. until, is that the right word? Yeah. 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 Um, until basically it finally came to life and we opened, uh, June 8th, I think last year. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, so it's yeah, it was first, it was, first non-test transaction I think was yesterday. Yeah. And that was a friend of ours. We came, came Wait, say that again. It was the first, our non first non-test transaction. Oh. So we make sure everything was all set and ready and actually worked. I ran a lot of test transactions, Wow. but the first one that was like for a legitimate other person, we, um, <laughs> That was, yeah, I think it was June 5th. Okay. So it was very cool. Wild. All right. Yeah. So then were you guys in on this from the, where it was like, okay, doors are opening or did you kind of open and then we're like, Emma, come on in. How did that no, relationship so, come to be? Um, so when we first presented or came to the town of Belmont, my husband and I, um, we had approached, I mean, I think it was, it was pre COVID. So it was 2018, 19. And we had to go through like everything with the town, you know, so it was initially meeting, presenting our business plan. Um, once they accepted us, um, to at least, you know, accepted our proposal to right. move forward. First step. Um, and again, since it was COVID, we, uh, there was, everything was Zoom. So it was kind of mm. interesting because it actually gave an opportunity to kind of see people on camera more than if we were just sitting in like mm. a town hall forum. Um, Emma, who's heavily involved in Belmont politics, uh, was sitting in on, 
on the meetings. And I'm like, this woman is a badass. And she like asked these amazing questions that some of them I'm like, I don't even know the answer to. Oh, and cool. Like, and so she was fascinating. Like, and I was kind of like, is she a plant? What's going on here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, and then there's a, a competitor that was uh, proposing to open as well. And the town had asked Emma if she'd be interested in doing an interview with my husband and I and then the proposed second location. And um, so we did just kind of a casual interview for, for Zoom, and I believe it was for Belmont TV. Belmont Media. Belmont Media. Yeah. They were like, we don't know anything about weed. Would you like to interview the two owners? <laughs> and I had worked with them before in other capacity that I had with the town. So it was, okay. it was like, yeah, absolutely. I'll talk about weed all day long. So, okay. Uh, August 2020, I yes, remember. It was yeah. in August. So then um, we connected like just, hey, thanks for interviewing us. Everything was great. I'd love to kind of meet up with you in person. And so we met. Like, I think late fall. Yeah, October. Yes. It was October 2020. And um, we went for just a casual dinner and a glass of wine. And we hit it off. Like, Emma had, I mean, her wealth of knowledge just in cannabis and then running companies was amazing. So it was kind of this, like, perfect fit. And, um, I love that. And it was a neat, like, she was with her previous company for 22 yeah, years? Almost, almost 20. Yeah, 18. 18 oh, years. Wow. years. was my last place. Um, but it was kind of maybe ready to move on so it was kind of just this perfect circumstance uh and it was nice because she was allowed to still work while she was giving a little bit of input um here along the way yeah but then when like push came to shove and it really started building like once we were under construction she was fully on board so she's been here since the we got the keys basically and okay and started turning the place over so that's awesome yeah what was your work previously um, I was a uh, director of strategy for a regional um, retail chain, Newberry Comics. Oh, okay. So, so she was literally the perfect, like the person you were looking for. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't even know I was looking for her. And then I was like, thank God. Isn't that the best? Uh, I mean, amazing. So that's so great. Mm -hmm. So then, so five years of the journey, just like to, to being where we are, mm -hmm. or no, I guess that would be then six years or this year encapsulates the five. I think six at this point. That's yeah. Boy, right it now. feels like a million years. Yeah. Um, I get it. I get it. Yeah, so my, I guess it's, well, the this reason, is six. So, so the yeah, lease was basically signed in 2019, 19. right? Okay. Yeah, then, yeah. Yeah. Because, so was cannabis in this industry, was this something that you felt called to like take on for some sort of like personal, like did you have, I guess what my connection was is like, was this something that either you were like, hey, I want to see the culture around cannabis shift and change and I want to be a part of that or it was more like hey we want to start a small business what's something we can kind of get it, in the ground floor kind of everything so okay. I um grew up I've been a proponent for cannabis since I was pretty young okay um and I grew up half my life in California half of my life in New England okay and kind of broken up in like 10 year increments. Mm -hmm. Um and I had always worked in like hospitality retail I worked, um, I did some courses in, for um, wine studies. I went to culinary school. I kind of had this background of like retail, hospitality, like, I, I don't know what, how to like explain it. Just yeah. all the like, I don't know. I love all of that stuff. Yeah. And um, my husband is in retail real estate. So oh. he's like a site finder for okay. like a lot of major retailers okay. all up and down the East Coast. Um, and so it was kind of this like, I had a child in 2013 and I was lucky enough to stay home with him and but I knew I wanted to go back to work in some capacity but I really didn't want to go back and work for somebody I mean I could have maybe worked part-time at a boutique or a restaurant um, we had friends that were in the industry in Massachusetts and she's also a, an owner of a female owner of a dispensary mm -hmm. um, she really motivated me we were out to dinner one night her husband was a previous partner of my husband's okay. so like they had that background her and I hit it off and she's super passionate about it like she started in the cultivation just actually like touching the product and growing it and yeah. cultivating um and I thought it was fascinating I'm like what a better what better industry to kind of be on the forefront yeah and then to be a female in the industry which is I think at the time it was like 10 percent of, oh, yeah. of of dispensaries or were, were female owned yeah. or female led yeah. Um, and so it just grew from there. It turned into this, like, should we or shouldn't we to like, we're doing it to then 
oh my gosh, this is like taking over our life. Yeah. <laughs> and then, <laughs> I and know then, that life. Yeah. And then to like meet Emma on top of it was like, we can be this like female team now that is amazing. And we are yin and yang in a sense of like, she's has the most amazing strengths. And it's like this, she was just, I mean, perfect. Like I couldn't have asked for like a better, I don't think I'd be here now if it wasn't for her, but, but yeah, it was really just an amazing opportunity and it all just came together in this perfect way. So that's awesome. Yeah. So then Emma, did you have any background as far as like, like, again, I guess same question of this kind of like call to action in a sense for like cannabis or plant-based medicine? What's yeah, that journey in a sense. for you? So uh, in addition to the, the, main job that I had for 18 years at Newberry Comics. Um, and I started a couple different uh, departments there. So it was kind of always bouncing around to different leadership roles, right? And then in 2013, I guess, my family and I, um, my husband and my sister and brother-in-law and another friend of ours, we decided that we were going to launch a distillery, like whiskey, wine, okay. or not whiskey, wine, whiskey, vodka, you know, gin, stuff like that, yeah. which you can't do without a federal license because it's, you know, moonshining otherwise. Okay. So we kind of went down this path of like heavily regulated industry. We did that for six years um, and then, you know, lease changes came up or whatever. And we're like, my job's, my day job's drastically different. Everybody just had other shit going on. So, um, yeah. Oh, you, yeah, please. <laughs> Sorry. We, we let my those F-bombs those fly. Right. So, yeah. So, so between like, you know, my operational job um, in Newberry and then my background in distilling and, you know, distilling is federally, like you, you have to start the federal licensing issue. Okay. So I, but done a lot of work with that. Um, and cannabis has always kind of been in my life. It's always been a thing. Yeah. Always a, been an advocate for it. And for the Belmont aspect of it, um, when in 2016, when it passed, when the ballot question passed to regulate it and allow yeah. it and legalize it, there was a very small group in Belmont that was very adamant, even though it passed in Belmont, yeah. they wanted to ban it. Oh. And so that's when I'm like, okay, I can't like let this happen. I'm gonna, yeah. my advocacy thing's gonna come out. Um, and so I was uh, the loudmouth weed lady, basically, yeah. at a lot of the meetings. Um, I was a town meeting member at the time, so I made sure, like, I put in a lot of groundwork to make sure that it could be here, and that's, you know, where, how we ended up meeting, um, the meetings that, that yeah. Kelly referenced where I was at all the time. Um, and for me, just, you know, on a personal level, the stigma and the taboo just always has infuriated me. Because yeah. it's always this, like, stoner stereotype, whether it's the lazy stoner or whether it's this. And like, you know, my dad smoked a lot of weed when I was a kid and it was very illegal then. Like, yeah, right. And so um, this idea that's like, you know, we were told you that if you were a 90s kid in the D.A.R.E. program, like, you know, the, the yeah. messaging mm -hmm. that you got. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that this was is your brain like, on drugs. Exactly. That was the big one. Exactly. Yeah. And so there's this whole dichotomy of like, but what I'm experiencing in real life and what I'm being taught is like wildly not accurate. Sure. And so that kind of set that tone for me yeah. going into it. Um, and then, you know, going to these town meetings where I would hear people say, like, you know, being an advocate, like, they're going to, places are going to open up, like, what do we want to just chuck tax dollars over the border to Cambridge or whatever, is going to bring industry here, it'll bring business here, it'll be an economic thing. And to hear somebody stand up in a meeting, and, and I, I was like 20, it must have been 2019, because it was in person at that point, yeah. um, to say, like, well, we don't want that type of person here. It's like, well, what type of person? It says, oh, I'm a Good mom, for you. I'm running a business, I'm running a business on the side, Yeah. Um, I play in an orchestra, I do that, like, let me tick off all these credentials, which yeah. I shouldn't have to do, by the way, Yeah. To show you that like a, what like what is that kind of person like yeah. define that please and so yeah. that always has just been like a motivating factor for me to push against that like I can be a good parent I can be a professional I can be active in my community government all these things and I can also smoke weed like they're not mutually exclusive mm -hmm. yeah and so to me that was always just like like give me something to push back on that'll be it oof I love that that fires me up yeah. that fires me <laughs> up because I similarly so I quit drinking in 2018 and then, and I don't subscribe, um, I don't use labels, it's just, just for me, of like, I don't identify as an alcoholic, I didn't need to go to AA, very familiar with AA. Um, and so that journey for me was really bizarre because I'm like, wait a minute, so plant-based medicine has been vilified mm -hmm. and then we glorify everything with alcohol. And that's not to say, again, there's yes. plenty of people who have a healthy relationship with alcohol. Mm -hmm. I just found mm -hmm. through trauma and other things, whatever. It just wasn't going to be that for me. Mm -hmm. um, and then I even have struggled and I'm coming out the other side of it now, but there's like, you guys know the, the term California sober? Yes. You know? Yeah. So it's like, you don't drink, but you, you uh, use cannabis. And 
I don't even utilize it to the extent of like true relaxation. It's like a lot of times for me, I was laughing with Ani because I like, um, there's a, like a one milligram gummy that like I love. Yeah. Because I'm like, it just <laughs> brings that noise down Absolutely. just enough. Yes. And so that's the thing that there's, it's such an, um, and not that I need to tell you to this, but yeah, the unexplored territory of not only what it can do as medicine, but even, yeah, it's like, who the fuck, if there's somebody wants to light up a joint because that's how they want to relax, yeah. it's like, oh, we're going to vilify that. But mm -hmm. like, you can go out and have four IPAs and then drive home and exactly. that's okay. And I'm not here to judge anybody's choices, but it's like, okay, if we're going to talk about, well, we don't want that type of customer, we don't want that type of person. It's like, we're all okay if, you know, the Red Sox win and everybody comes and hung over the next day to work. Mm -hmm. That's like, oh, you had a good time too. Oh, you know, like that's okay. And so I very much feel that same way. And I think especially as women and especially as mothers. Yes. Just completely. Like my whole body is, is electrified. It, the, that's something I was really interested for you guys of like, what has that, how has that either like affected your identity or have you come up against that with other people? Like, oh, you're a mom, but you also work in cannabis or like, yeah. um, I'm hoping you guys keep people who understand you and love you. And so those aren't things that you bump up against often. Yep. But I'm just curious what that journey has been like, because we don't see that a lot. No. And I, I personally like um, through high school too, you know, I went to high school in New Hampshire and it was a big drinking um, town yeah. and I never drank in high school. And I, I smoked. Yeah. And it was funny because I was always the designated driver. And yeah. so it's like, <laughs> which is funny because it's like, here's this thing that's totally illegal. Yeah. But I'm the one that's like the responsible one to be like, oh, my friends had a bunch of beers and I'm driving them home. Yeah. Um, not that I was smoking and driving, but. Sure. Um, and then uh, I continued to always use it. And then in California, it's definitely more, I mean, it was legalized there yeah. much earlier and it was kind of like more of a, a general lifestyle, yeah. right? And so when I moved back here, it was still kind of taboo. Mm -hmm. And um, and then especially when we started looking at opening. So my son, and another reason I was interested in it, so my son's on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And he has, a, you know, a few, I you know, disabilities, like neurodivergency yeah. and stuff like that. And we sought a lot of... Um, like alternative treatment therapies mm -hmm. for him too. But just seeing like the way that therapy worked so well for him in certain ways. And then, you know, to try to put off as long as we could or hopefully not have to put him on like a pharmaceutical. Yeah. If there was things that would work. And I don't know if you're familiar with the like Charlotte's Web documentary, yeah. but yeah. right. It's totally obviously different because it's about epilepsy. But right. if, if everyone could watch that and it would open their eyes to like how this natural plant could actually provide unbelievable benefits that For a sure. pharmaceutical couldn't, it really makes you think like, wow, this is so untapped and it's being restricted for reasons that are out of our control. Right. Um, and, and then to get into it. So my, my son was in kindergarten when, when we really started this whole thing and we live in a, you know, small, like nice little town in Massachusetts. And yeah. we were new too. I think we had been in town for maybe two years and it was, I felt alienated in general being yeah. up at the school because my son was not typical. Mm. So it was hard enough being up there at times. And then I'm like, now on top of being new to town, I'm going to be the mom that's like opening a dispensary two towns over and what are these women going to think of me? Like, yeah. are they not going to want their kids to come and play at my house? Mm -hmm. Because and like... Kelly, they banned it, right? Like Winchester. Yeah, Winchester banned, banned it. it. My town banned it. Uh, so it wasn't yeah. even allowed there. And um, and so we kind of slowly dipped our toes with like who we were telling about it. And what was amazing actually was a lot of people were like, oh, no way. That's fascinating. Tons of people like, I haven't tried, you know, weed since college course, or yeah. whatever. And then... Um, and then I think what happened was during COVID, which I think we all experienced. And I think it sounds like you stopped drinking prior. Yeah. Everybody drank too much. We oh, were yeah. sitting at home. And then I started hearing from a lot of moms mm. after COVID or once like the schools were opening up, even if it was part time, yeah. that people were like, I've been drinking way too much. Oh, I'm sure. Because yeah. I needed to take the edge off because I was home with my four kids oh, yeah. and my husband. Yeah. This was partner, not what I signed up for. Yeah. <laughs> for like two years straight. Yeah. And I was having wine every single night. And this is what everyone was telling me. Yeah. And then it turned into this, like, I can't sleep. And now we're all getting to this age where we're 
premenopause. Yep. And sleeping's even harder. Like yep. there's night sweats and anxiety and all this stuff. And I, it was fascinating how many people came out of the woodwork that I would never have expected that are, will come to me and be like, I need help. Or my sister, need, can, can we come to you and, um, you know, and, and you can direct me to what you think will help me get a good night's sleep yeah. or maybe take the edge off after my kids go to bed yeah. instead of drinking a bottle of wine or t- glasses of wine at night. Yeah. Instead, maybe here's an alternative and then people can really see the benefits that it can help you, you know, to yeah. relax or however you want to use it. Yeah. I, yes, I love it so much. I also want to hear your answer. I'm so ADD. I'm like, I have to respond and then we're going to come back to, I want to hear yours. <laughs> um, that's the fun of being a podcast host and being like, wait, it's a blast. What? Um, yeah, first, we don't explore everything that there is to do with cannabis because the pharmaceutical industry. Exactly. What's up, Big Pharma? Thank you. Um, so, yeah, when it's like, we don't know what we do know what, and we see you. Um, I, I try to be delicate. No, about I it, know. But- well, you don't have to. I don't, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not on the hook. You know what I mean? I'm just a, just a humble comedian. Um, but I think the other thing, I, I think so much, especially when you talk about neurodivergence and, and it just being on a huge spectrum. I mean, again, for me, as you can tell, I have to close my eyes sometimes to hear all of my mm-hmm. thoughts because everything comes in so much and all of the sensory and everything where it's like the amount of options mm-hmm. and opportunity and growth and healing that we have that if we allowed ourselves and again just another way we're like i'm not here to tackle like growth and greed you know yes. the greed that exists within like humanity like that's just bigger than what i want to chew but i think it's offering that advice as much as or not even advice excuse me but um experience exactly as much as possible of like that's where I was like, I think that you both are complete badasses. Like when Ani was like, can you do this? I was like, oh, uh, yeah, on board, on board. Because the true, um, I think, guts to go, this is my truth. This is what I believe to be true. This is my experience. And so I'm going to fight for this to become a thing. I'm going to fight for this to be a way that can help other women. I mean, we talk about neurodivergence. Then you talk about hormone imbalance. Mm -hmm. You know, I had two kids within three year span and I'm still kind of knocked out the side of it. And, you know, I'm not old. I'm 38. So my body's not what it was at 25, but it's not, you know, yeah, perimenopausal Mm -hmm. or anything like that yet. But a huge shift in hormones. And I'm like, we have no idea the amount. Of, now, it may not be THC alone, but it's like, okay, if it was better regulated, if we knew what we could do with yes. it, could we add that with other things Absolutely. to be able to, I mean, the amount of things that we could do with it, right? If it's plant-based, we look at it, it's like the amount of different things you could do with like corn. Okay, you could eat it just as corn, but you could put it in this, you could put it in a dip. It could yep. be packing peanuts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly right. So the amount of things that we could do with it, and I feel like that's the same thing, that we are yeah. so limited still yep. Mm-hmm. with what the gift of it is and Absolutely. what we're actually able to do. And I think so much of it does start. Like, I even felt that hesitation when my dad's like, oh, so where, where are you going? And I'm like, all right, be big, be big. I was like, well, I'm going to interview two female entrepreneurs who are running this, you know, cannabis dispensary, and this is all female-led, and mm-hmm. they're pioneering this thing. And, you know, where I'm like, it's my dad. He's love him to death. He's not going to ask follow-up questions, you know? <laughs> and, uh, but... But even just that of not feeling like I had to to back away mm-hmm. and being like, no, this is like a badass thing that's happening. And and for me, you know, I'm all about healing in general, mm-hmm. which is there's so many different ways to heal and everybody's going to do it differently because what everybody's ailment is needs a different medicine. Absolutely. And, and, you know, now I'm talking a little bit more heady, whether that is actually plant-based medicine or just like, what do you need? Maybe you need a good concert or you need this or you need yes. that. And I think with all of that regulation and all the fear of like, well, we can't have that mm-hmm. here or right. like, well, what are your kids going to think? Or, oh, like any of that. And I just, on a personal note, I'm like, so not welcoming any sort of conversation like that <laughs> anymore, you know? And I think in society, you know, we're in this with social media and everything and the amount of like oversharing that people yeah. do. But then there's also things that are taboo that, I've always tried to be open about like Mm. maybe it's everyone's personal choice to maybe not talk about my son's diagnosis. But like I find when I do that, it opens so many other people that are like, oh, my child has a diagnosis. I'm like, I wish you I wish that there was people that had talked to me about that when I first found out when I was going through it and was like or, you know, like a miscarriage. There's so many things with women and and menopause and all this stuff that it's like it's taboo let's not talk about it and then to be on the cannabis side of it too where like no one want no wants to admit it 
I mean, I went through it even like with my mother, like she was proud of me going back to work, but there were certain times where she's like, well, I'm not going to, you know, I'm, I'm probably not going to tell certain friends. I'm like, mm-hmm. this is a career opportunity for me and I'm going out on a limb and I'm totally exposing myself yeah. and I'm going back to work more than full time yeah. than taking on something part time. But it's because yeah. I, because I believe in it yeah. and I believe in, you know, to go back to the benefits of it and like what is so special about it is like alcohol seems to do kind of one thing for people. It, yeah. it, it numbs you, right? Yep. It's like, numbs you it enough. Works. It works. It works. No, it does. <laughs> and it numbs you enough to go like, either you're going to go and have a better time if you're socially, yeah. you know, maybe you're more, you know, introverted um, or for whatever reason people use it and it kind of ends up having the same result if it's used Correct. too much or for too long of a time, it's damaging. And then you look at the amount of drinking and driving or health yeah, you know, yeah. things that are, it's terrible for yeah. you. And then the fact that this is legal and it's natural and people aren't talking about how it can benefit. Yeah. And what's amazing, I think being here and being in a, you know, a nice small community and it's upper class mm-hmm. that the amount of women that come in our age, what's the common complaint? Can't need sleep. help sleeping. Can't sleep. Uh, what do you have for sleep? Uh, and it's like, yeah, why is everybody, why aren't more? And then I'll talk to certain people and they're like, oh, my wife used those all through menopause or it's like, okay, so it's working, but like, let's talk about it. Let's normalize it. Yeah. Okay. I want to come talk. Yes. Uh, wait, Go ahead. I want to come back to talking about <laughs> the normalization of like talking about menopause in general, because mm-hmm. now is that's kind of like the next thing where I'm like, oh, that's like the next thing ahead in like womanhood mm-hmm. um, and realizing I'm like, oh, I don't know shit about it because we don't talk about they it. They don't that's talk insane. about it. So let's put a pin in that. Okay, but I want to hear, yeah, what your experience has been of kind of being the cannabis advocate while being a mother. And I mean, you spoke to it a little bit earlier, yeah. but that's why I'm curious to hear what that's been like. For yeah, you. for sure. So I mentioned there was like a meeting, right, a town meeting. So, And I distinctly remember it as like a turning point because it was, you know, again, like 2018, 19, whatever. Um, and I was at a planning board meeting, where, which is where that person said, like, we, well, we don't want that kind of person, sure. that kind of business. And I was I had this moment where like, well, uh, here we go. Like, well, I can't. Yep. There's no turning back. I'm outing myself. <laughs> I heard it. Yeah. I heard it. And here we go. Um, and, uh, you know, my kids were younger at the time. So 2019, I can't do that math off the top of my head. But they were still like my oldest still in high school. Sure. Um, or, or about to just out or whatever. So it was one of those moments where I'm weighing it in that split second before I am about to stand up and say, well, well, I'm a cannabis user. Are you talking about me? You know, like, you don't want me here? Yeah. Um, and I thought, like, is my kid, my youngest one in elementary school, like, are, are her friends going to be like, oh, you can't go to her house? Or my son who's in middle school, like, he was, like, heading towards high school, like, are they going to, is this going to ostracize them mm. because of this? And, you know, meanwhile, I'm getting these flyers home from the school, like, fundraising things about, like, wine mom night, like, hey, yes. everybody. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, so that's fine. But, and, and for me personally, if I have a glass of wine, I'm a lightweight. Yeah, I have a glass of wine. My ass is on the ground. Yeah. Like I cannot hold my liquor at all. So it's like so. So you're promoting this thing to me, which would put me on my ass. Yeah. Um, but meanwhile, I can smoke a joint and be functional, fine, and yeah. actually just take an edge off because I'm a I'm a I'm a little bit high energy. Yeah. Um, and I have a lot of shit going on. I like to stay. I like to set a very hectic pace for myself. That's where I like to live. Yeah. Just but like busy. I can't shut <laughs> off. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. doing a lot of shit, but yeah. I can never get my brain to actually like. Hey, hey, it's actually time to stop. Yeah, we're done. And that's what I. That's where I like cannabis. And yeah, does it have other benefits? Yes, it gets like migraines are good. Like I have a lot of physical like things, but I also just like it to chill the fuck out. Yeah. Because I can't. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that was important. And from a parent perspective, you know, this thing that I always kept coming back to, especially with my older kids, like, you know, I'm talking about having like a 20, 21 year old, like, you know, kind of the, the time the they might be thinking about getting a fake ID, like something in that mm. realm. And we had we, my, my family, we have a lot of community. We talk a lot. Yeah. We talk a lot. Um, and I've never been one to shy away from what we think, but it's also skirting, especially when it was illegal still, you skirt yeah. that line because you don't want somebody, your kids saying like, oh, my mom smokes weed. Mm-hmm. And sure. then suddenly you have somebody knocking at your door because they just said that you're doing something illegal, right? Yeah. But when it changed, my point of view, especially talking to my bigger kids, it's like if my kids are going to a party because they're going to go to parties. Yep. Um, that's what they do. That's what teenagers do. They always have. Yep. I was partying in the woods in upstate New York when that was the place. You know, you go to the dump and you have some beers. Like that yeah. was what we did. Yeah, yeah, Ours was the Wendy's parking uh, yeah, lot. Yeah, go exactly. on, go on. So I'm thinking, in a, you know, in a, in a purely like concern for my kids. Yeah. 
if they're going to a party, what would I rather have them be doing? Mm. Chugging beers or vodka shot or doing whatever and having yeah. their stomach pumped like every freaking story that I hear about yeah. or smoking some weed. Yeah. And like the, it was a no, it was a no brainer for me. It's like you talk to them about how to consume something safely. If you're going to do it, here's how to do it safely. It's harm yeah. reduction 101, right? But you apply it to your kids. And so if you're asking me, like, do I want my kid to go to a party and get rip shit drunk or do I want him to go to a party and smoke a joint? Yeah. I'm choosing the same one every time because one isn't going to kill them. Yeah. That's what I always comes down to me is one of those choices is not going to kill my kid. Yeah. That's all I want. And so I had to kind of really rein that in for myself when I was talking to people or feeling um, like, oh, I don't know. Do I tell them? Do I tell yeah. them what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, I am. Because like my kid's safety is paramount. Yep. And so I'm not going to sit here and tell somebody like, well, you know, it's cannabis, but I, I just, I only use it because like I have a stomach ache and sometimes like I, I, I just chose not to go down that route. Yep. And you know, the more I talk about it, the more I get whipped up about it, it comes down to that. It's like we, we demonize this one thing because it was illegal for a lot of years. And by the way, why was it illegal? Yeah. Racism. Right. That's right. why it was illegal. So right, let's, right, right. you know, yep. let's remember that. Mm -hmm. Um, but so yeah, it's well, just and that's like, even why we call it marijuana or what yeah, we did for exactly. so long, which is a whole exactly. other point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's this whole kind of issue yeah. over here that we don't. Sure. Yeah, and and when we saw that in Belma and Kelly experienced it when they were doing their outreach meetings, um, there's still a lot of reefer madness in there. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm sitting at the playground one day waiting for my uh, she was like maybe fifth or fourth grade or something, and it was right when kind of I was in in the thick of like people trying to ban it and so um, another mom came over and like you know mom to mom here's my petition like we have to keep this out of our community oh, and gave me it was great i just sat there like give me your whole spiel but i'll take it all in and at the end of it i was like okay thanks very much she's like, you're gonna sign it's like absolutely not yeah but it tells me exactly what they were planning like they gave me she gave me point a to z yeah. of how they were going to get this done mm. which was like okay like Thank i you. actually have to play yeah yeah you're welcome <laughs> yeah like i actually have to play ball here for real yeah um and and that well and the other part that I love about that is like we can't have this in our community. I'm like, jokes on you. Yeah, it is in your community. Is. Okay. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. why don't we have it in a way where like we can people can pay taxes? I know the tax structure is different, but yeah. you know, where it's like, let's bring more economic growth to our and let's make a place where it's like safe and clean for yeah. adults to be able to come and engage should they choose to engage. Yeah. And I think you're absolutely right. I that's something that drives me absolutely batshit when it's like Oh, well, we sent our, you know, not that there's anything wrong, private school, my kids are in a private uh, pre-K and all the things, but the point being where it's like when people think that because they're protecting their mm -hmm. kids. Yeah. When I, I'm like, do you know where everybody goes for the best drugs? Private school. Okay. Yeah. Do you understand? Yes. <laughs> there's the kids with more money. There's better yeah. drugs there. Yeah. And um, pharmaceutical, you know? Yeah, exactly. And so I think that, I think the reason why I get really triggered by the vilification of it, or really when we vilify anything where we just don't talk about it. Right. I think that's the difference why I get really triggered by it is I'm like, I know that you're only responding out of whatever you think is happening. And it's probably because of my own relationship with alcohol where I'm like, I didn't even realize that my drinking was a problem for so long because everybody else around me was matching it. So I didn't even know, I, did, I, I turned off any sort of intuition or internal signals of like, hey, this is way too much for me. Mm -hmm. This is not good for me. And then it becomes habitual and then it becomes, you know, and all of the things. And again, it's not to also vilify alcohol. I think for people that it does take that edge off, they have a healthy relationship. Fantastic. But all of us being out here. Yeah. Like, you know, mom, uh, the amount of like wine mom merch. Really? It's out of control. Yes. yes. It's out of control. Yeah. Right. And. And again, it's like to each their own. But yeah, I think but to it was say just that normalized. Well, yes. just I mean, yes. beyond beyond yes. normalized, it's so it's heavily promoted. Oh gosh, yeah. yeah, everywhere. Yeah, and it's like, why can't you take an edible and yeah. go? I mean, the only real times, basically, like I was, I've always been into music, so I did a lot of like Grateful Dead and Fish shows and stuff yeah. through high school, and. I love that you're a fish head. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love this. But that was like, that was like one of the only places you could go where you're like, yeah, here's yeah. my like-minded people. Yeah. But then it was, everything was illegal. Like it was yeah. taboo. You could get in trouble. Like I remember them catching me with an eighth of weed at yeah. Great Woods and <laughs> they made me put, it, throw it on the ground, like a security yeah. and yeah. grind it into the dirt parking lot. And then like my I mean, I was probably 18 and we had beer and they didn't make us drop yeah, yeah. out. Yeah. And Everybody everyone was hammered. like walking around shit face. And I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. You know, and it's, it's amazing that, you know, yeah. so you can go from like at least that environment where it was accepted. Yeah. Um, and then 
uh, elsewhere, everywhere you go, it's yeah. promoted. Well, and I love what you talk about too, Emma, with like harm uh, reduction too, where it's like, okay, yeah, when we talk about this in the aspect of like children, mm -hmm. right? It's like, yeah, okay, we're gonna have the same conversations with them that we would hopefully have. Like, I think that's, it's throwing the baby out with the bathwater on the conversation yeah. of cannabis. I'm like, this doesn't mean I'm gonna hand out pre-rolls at yeah. like trick or treat, okay? Absolutely. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's not the vibe. Well, yeah, and that's just a difference we, between condoning correct. And, and education. And correct. we go through like oh, I a, love that. Yeah, that's and, great. And we go through, you know, where, where I keep my cannabis at home and it's like safe and contained yep and then i think of how easy it was to access like yep our parents alcohol cabinets or everyone you know it's like how easy it was to get alcohol and like and, and it was just a thing like everyone did it but yep. i want emma to share her um story with the oh dare, oh the dare, dare officer dad, yeah. yeah i mean this i always credit this I with like this my um my foray into activism with weed you know it's sixth grade dare program whatever and we're like me and two of my friends my two best friends our dads all knew each other or whatever and we were like sitting in the science classroom and the dare, you know, officers are in there and they've got their holsters and their guns and they're, yeah. and they brought out this, this, um, I don't even know what it was. It was some synthetic thing that they lit in the classroom to let us know that if you smell this at a party, this is what cannabis smells like and it's bad guys, you need to leave. And they lit that thing and my two friends and I, we're all like, oh my God, oh my, like we all just oh, exchanged like, oh looks no. like, we know that smell. We're in sixth grade, we're like 12 years old, right? Yeah. And our dads all grow like we'd all accidentally open the door and be like oh what are these tomato plants it's like no it's not tomato plants yeah yeah um so where our dads all grew they all smoked and we just had this moment of like oh my dad uh, like are, are, are our dads bad guys oh. like this horrible moment for a 12 year old yeah. being told by a bunch of cops standing in front you know, nope nope disrespect but like standing in front of a classroom saying like if you smell this there's bad guys mm. it's like but that's our dad and, and i remember one of my friends like just sobbing after this class like but I, but my dad's not a bad guy he's not a bad oh, guy like so what do we do are we supposed to tell like just like looking back on it it's like wow, it like did a number on us, right? Mm. <laughs> like, and it's being talked to just like yeah. heroin or meth, like anything that they, that it was just all looped into that. Yep. And um, and so for me growing up, that like I guess that was like where my my cynicism maybe started. I don't know, where it's like, okay, well maybe everything that we're learning about this isn't true. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it, it's it's funny because like Kelly and our kid, like Lucas, her son is 11. Mm -hmm. um, sorry for throwing a name out there, Kelly. And, and my kids are older. So like when I got into this, it was it was kind of a different conversation where it's like, yeah, do I keep everything under lock and key? Like, no, I don't. But I also trust my kids. Yeah. Where, I mean, one of them is 25. She comes in here and shops. It's fine. Yeah. Um, and the younger one, it's like, hey, you know, if you get caught with this, you're in a lot of shit and I'm in a lot of shit. So don't. And, and he never would. Like, I yeah. trust him mm -hmm. with that. Um, my house smells like weed. Like, like they know when I come home and open something up to put in, like, oh, I just bought this. I'm going to put it in my, my big Tupperware that I keep all clamped down. Yep. They're like, did you just smoke in there? Or is it just what, is this just your stash? It's like, it's just my stash. But, <laughs> but we talk about it. Like the point is, is that yeah. we don't, I don't hide it from them. Um, and that actually took a long time to get over mentally. Yeah. Cause mm -hmm. it was one of those things like, do I, t like, I would not think twice about having, especially when I was making it, like yeah. having a glass of whiskey at home. Like, it's like, oh yeah, we made this. This is the bourbon. Um, but I would still be like, uh, do I tell my kids that I took it? Like, do I tell them that I took something? Do I tell them that I have like a high five and I'm sipping a bet? It was just a weird, mm. like putting that mindset into practicality was definitely a hurdle for me mm -hmm. to get over. Yeah, and it still is like, it's still a weird, like, uh, because I feel like, like I do have to make, be careful about that, that step between education and openness and condoning. Mm. And so it's a conversation we have a lot. And by the way, my 19 year old has a med card and that's, yeah for anxiety and so like all these different hosts of issues that people do have that. But it's, it is always remarkable to me too, that that's accepted. And he can, because he is that age, he has his med card. He got it in seven minutes on a phone call with a doctor with a Gmail address. Yeah. And he can go into any dispenser. He can be marketed to, which is yep. heavily on my mind right now for a lot of reasons. Yep. <laughs> Anybody in this room knows. Um, and he can be marketed to, he can be given discounts. He can be given all this stuff under the sun at a higher potency than what he could get if he walked in here and bought it. Yeah. So, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of like tension, I think with age in, in that, especially as you get into that later teenage 21 year old. Um, yeah. but it's, it's just something to be mindful for me as a parent with, with kids that are aware of it and older, like, how do you navigate that? Right. Yeah. How do you talk about it? Um, and it's, you know, I'm not 
perfect at it, but I think my kids are pretty great and I trust them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my oldest is in grad school for social work and it's specializing in addiction studies. So we have a lot of conversations about that, what it means and what it means for your brain development. And by the way, guys, it's still illegal for you. So don't screw up. Mm -hmm. Like that's where it always comes down to. Well, and I think I love everything that you said. And, but definitely the idea of like that they're ongoing conversations. Yeah. And I feel like sometimes as parents and maybe this is like, cause you know, we're like this new generation of parents where we talk about feelings mm-hmm. and we, you know, and there's, there are more touch points. There's more conversations, Absolutely. which, so we still feel like, am I talking about it too much? Is it not right? <laughs> totally. Like maybe we don't <laughs> yeah. need to talk about that. I feel like I'm over talking it when in the reality it's like, but growth is evolution. So why would we only have like four conversations throughout high school and be like, you're good to go, right? Yep. Have fun, right? Like, I don't know. I went to college and all of a sudden I was like, I'm supposed to just like know how to do this. Oh, yeah. And yeah. my mom's a therapist. We had so many conversations. I was like, please stop talking to me about things. <laughs> and I, you know, and I still felt that feeling of like, oh, holy shit. Now it's just on me. Right. And yeah. so I love that because I feel like, especially for kids at that age, where at the time you do feel like an adult because we're telling you that. And in reality, I'm like, dude, up until 25, like after 25, mm-hmm. like I'm hoping you've got some real skills. Yes. But up yeah. until then, I'm like, yeah, dude, you're free balling. You're out here yes. just trying to figure it out. <laughs> mm-hmm. yep. And I think that that's so vital. And I think especially around substances that alter in any capacity because just having that conversation of like, there are things, right? Like, you could say, well, Tylenol alters because then it takes away my migraine, right? So it's like, great, there are things that help aid in making us feel good. And what is the level of numbness that you're wanting to feel? And why are you trying to access yeah, that totally. feeling, right? Because there are some days where it's like, I'm aware of my need and want to check out. And I'm knowing that that means that tomorrow I'm going to wake up and keep doing whatever, like that that's a healthy, like I just need a mental break versus mm-hmm. like, Ooh, this has been going on for quite a while. Or right. now it's an unconscious thing. And it's very tricky that they, they can be very, you know, um, anyway, that's just, just all of the things that I, I love yeah. that the idea that it's an ever evolving conversation, um, so then that actually perfectly brings us back to the fact that no one is talking about um, like menopause and all of the things within women there, which is why I think you guys are in such a great, cool spot. And I'm interested to see everything that continues to grow for you guys, both here physically um, and also just within like your communities and your networks, because I do think that there's a lot of aid. And so I'm interested to hear from you guys of what cannabis can do to minimize and or mitigate those wild hormonal shifts that are happening during menopause that nobody talks about. No one I mean, I felt that way about getting pregnant and then after the baby and all the things that are having my body, oh, I'm no like, worst, gosh, right? nobody oh, wanted no. to give me a heads up. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, like, like nobody wanted to let me know. That I'd just be crying on the floor yeah. for no reason. Or, yeah. or that, like, you're, like, there's studies that, like, your hormones change after pregnancy. And oh, yeah. Sometimes they say, like, they don't revert back to what they were for five years, but in a lot of cases, they they don't at yes, all. At yeah. all. Yeah. And I had like severe postpartum. Yep. And it's like no one wants to talk about it. And there was no information for that for me. Like it was like, why am I feeling like this? And it took, I think he was maybe six months. And I just felt so incredibly alienated. And yeah. I well, because you already are alienated because right, you're at like, home, you're tethered to my a kid. whole life yeah. had changed. Like I was running a bar and I was surrounded by like people all the time. And yep. all of a sudden I'm home. My husband's still working in Boston. He's doing all his things. And here I am with home with a baby who had difficulties from the get go. Yeah. And it was super alienating. Yeah. And, you know, I remember I actually went to the hospital and I was like, something's wrong. And I lucked out with this amazing nurse that was like, you have postpartum. And she got me on like the track to meet with people and get into therapy. And like from that, and I'm like open to talking about that because people don't talk about it. Yeah. And if one person says to you, I went through that yeah. or here's what helped me, like, let's get rid of the taboo surrounding all of that stuff. Yeah. And it's all this female stuff. It's yeah. pregnancy, miscarriage, illness, hormones, menopause. Yeah. And it's just been taboo because we're just supposed to take everything on the chin and yeah. run, you just know, beef it through. You just beef and, it yeah. through. Yeah, yep. Get through it and put a smile on well, it and, like, and look I, pretty. And it's like, no. Dude, 100. <laughs> and also, I think with that, and it kind of goes back to like parallel conversations, um, direct to the camera of like, right? 
like um, big pharma wanting to be like, no, it's bad, it's bad, right? Because then that way we can don't, control like, it. I we can't can't control everybody yeah. else. I know. I'm sure you're like you don't even. I can <laughs> I mean, write a listen, dissertation. Our, like, grand- yeah. Or grandparents or whatever had quaaludes. Like they, like they, right. had, they had it going yeah. on. Right. Like, so it's like okay, so that's okay. And then like what we're gonna yeah. give you to numb you. And I feel like the same conversation happens around women, where if we could isolate them again, the narrative is changing. Everyone, okay. Um, but it's still very ingrained by even like us having this conversation where if we can convince all of these women to not speak up because if you're pretty, then you'll be liked, but we don't want to hear about what's going on with your body. We definitely want to hear it because it makes us uncomfortable Mm -hmm. and we don't want to know that you struggle with something because then that means that we all have to admit that we struggle with something and that's too dangerous. We cannot afford to see any, you know, cracks in the facade. And I think, um, but it is one of those things where like, I think the more women talk to each other, they're like, holy shit, wait a minute. Like, I'm not alone. And like, this is the thing that's all happening. And then that creates power, right? That creates a sense of like, oh, we are powerful and we are powerful together. And like, we are capable of doing this thing. And so it's not surprising to me that those conversations have not been promoted. Well, and that's what's cool. I mean, just on a personal level, like working with Kelly and we've been through it in the last couple of years. Um, getting this play, like just a a lot of shit. We spent a lot of time together. And so it's been interesting to me. Like no one told me about perimenopause. Like I, you knew about menopause, you knew about like everything else, but like the holy shit, there's this, how long is it going to last? Like I had no idea. I was like, I'm at 47. I'm getting up there. And like, and especially like at the time, you know, for me, it's been about the, like the mental shift mm. with parenthood yeah. because mm-hmm. my kids are going, I like, I sent the second one off to college and man, that was rough. Like that was a struggle yeah. because the first one was like, oh my God, my first one, my baby's going off. I'm so proud of her. Everything's great. Second one, I was like, holy shit, I got one left. Like, and I had to like deeply shift the same time we were opening. Mm-hmm. So it was like a whole like mm. world shift for me at once of like a different career, a different path, leaving 18 years of a job that I was comfortable in. Um, and then also coming to grips with like the hormone changes of perimenopause and also my kids leaving and yeah. what like really redefining motherhood for myself, which was a big ass slap in the face because I wasn't prepared for it. I really wasn't. And, yeah. and wrapping my head around that, like not having... Um, something to, to quiet the thoughts mm. <laughs> like, and, and my, you know, I'm, I'm, I've always had anxiety, but I don't think to the level that like, I, I never, I, I've tried pharmaceuticals. They didn't work for me. Yeah. Um, it's like, wow, I feel nothing. This is great. Therapy. It's not great. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't great. Like for me to not feel anything Yeah. That, like I learned that lesson very quickly. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe I should back away from that. Cause this yeah. feels real good. Yeah. Too good. Yeah. Um, and so having cannabis available to be able to like in that middle of the night spiral where like Mm -hmm. my babies are all gone. Like I don't take anybody to the playground anymore. I don't do all these Mm. things that just defined my life for 25 years. It's, it's just not there anymore. And so to me, that was really like, yeah, it's great. It helps me sleep at night, but moreover, it just like gets me out of that head spiral that I would find myself in a lot. And I think the benefit to have a female partner in, you know, to be at at, like, we're so understanding to each other where it's like, we can we, you like, know, what is this new fresh hell we just figured out we've like, cried a few yeah, times I mean yeah. I lean on Emma a lot like she's been through it with three kids that like mine's still younger than her youngest so like I'm like did you ever experience this and yep. but yeah, we have we that like, like crying in the office this morning yeah. about like middle school graduation yeah. it's like no it's a thing it's yeah. a whole thing yeah. and you know and then to to lean on that and then to be open with it but I mean and amazingly how it ended up we hired Kristen who's our um, assistant like our general manager we kind of ended up with this we have Elisa, who's our inventory manager, and then Ani, who's our marketing manager. It's like we ended up with a whole team of of women, yeah, which is freaking awesome. Yeah, I think it's great, but I think you're right where it's like we speak the same language, mm-hmm. and I think in that, I mean, I'm a person where I'm like, get it out and get it out of the way, yeah. meaning like yeah. with your feelings, and not in the negative sense, but like there's so much work to keep them in. And like, I have to, you know, and even this idea that it's like emotions aren't professional or something like that, that like they can't co I'm like, what the fuck? I don't want anybody working for me that doesn't feel emotional about what they're showing up to do. Right. You know what I mean? (laughs) We're building an empire here. I need you to be invested. And the shit's hard. Yeah. It's it's hard. It's fucking hard hard work. And if it's not affecting you, that's also another problem. We need to have a conversation. And so, yeah, I think that's so great to be able to have those touch points with people and, really experience because what I'm really finding the more that I'm like living authentically and how I define that for myself is like oh yeah 
life is happening and we all, everybody's like, oh, I do this to feel alive or I do this or I want to feel joy and all the shit that we do and all these things that we consume and everything else. And it's like, do we want to feel alive? And then the things that make us feel the most alive are those feelings of like, oh my gosh, I'm redefining my entire life. And while experiencing all these hormonal changes or like, you know, just all of these things that it's like, yeah, that's life. That's what's actually happening. Mm -hmm. That's what's really offering us the opportunity to evolve and shift and change. And when we don't allow ourselves the freedom to be able to go there and then share it. Yes. You know, like when you talk about it's like the amount of women, you know, if you talk about children with neurodivergence and obviously that's changing a lot, the conversation, Mm -hmm. um, but it still feels very isolating. It's always very scary. You don't know how they're going to develop. And then of course you always go to, you know, intrusive thoughts and places like that. And, um, and then again with menopause, what's happening to me, pregnancy, all of these things that we don't talk about and it's like gosh the freedom and you could see it on people's faces mm-hmm. when you say it and they've been waiting yes, for somebody absolutely. to ask them about it yes. right yeah like and i, th- I think like uh, is- we, yeah and i think that we've all everybody in here female male like whatever yeah. em- employees we have in here i think what cannabis does it's kind of a segue in a weird side i don't know it's maybe a little off tangent but like we have so many people that come in here and share yes. a lot of mm-hmm. stuff with us because like, hey, I'm looking for this and here's why. And like, you know, all of these guys behind the counter have had it at one time or another where I someone, they're, they are playing counselor. Yeah. They're sitting on this couch with someone that's crying because they can't sleep because this is going on and they're just looking for like something to not make them feel so bad, mm. but they don't want to take the drugs that they've been on that make them feel worse. Yeah. And so we've all like, I, I mean, the, the, this crew is amazing. amazing. Like they, they end up like they, they end up playing therapist to people just standing behind the counter trying to sell a mate. Yeah. And like, you don't see that in places mm-hmm. or, or you have somebody come in here and they're like, you know, I don't know. I, I, I like I'm I hot flashes. I'm 57 and I'm like, this is terrible. And I don't know what to do. And, and you have these conversations that like you would never have in regular retail. Yes. <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah. yeah. They're certainly not at the liquor store. No, yeah. Exactly. yeah. Nobody's no, sitting happen. down being like, listen, I can't yeah. sleep. Yeah. It's but like, like yeah. cannabis is a really weird bear. And yeah. that, that, you know, I am in an awe of, of the staff every Make day just because of the conversations that they end up put, having, having with people and the compassion yeah. that they show to people and the knowledge that they're giving them. And it's like, Jesus, like you can't like, I I know I feel like uh, you know sorry guys I feel like I'm talking at you but like it's true <laughs> yeah, like it's yeah. just amazing and like we're we were lucky to have an amazing yes. crew but people want to be heard and like we hear yeah. them and every one of our staff it's like that's what everyone says it's so oh, like I love that authentic and everyone takes their time to really like connect with customers and I truly think our customer service is like the pinnacle of who we are but everyone in here is like so genuine and it's it's amazing so and it, and it is it's really interesting to see that the like just the simple act of selling that product to someone can cause such a connect, connection like that that mm-hmm. you don't it's rare to see in retail i mean we've been in retail for a million years and it's like yeah you don't have those same conversations about pop figures over the counter or whatever yeah, <laughs> like it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah. different folding henleys yeah, yeah it's not yeah, exactly. quite the same experience yeah <laughs> Oh man. Well, I love that. Well, thank thank you. Is there, is there anything else? I feel like we covered it. I feel good. (laughs) I feel like I'm ready to hang out even more. I, yeah. So that's, uh, yeah. Is there anything that you guys feel like, um, as you're moving into this next kind of phase again, congrats on like one year. That's such a huge accomplishment for any business, but certainly in a highly regulated, you know, um, like you're 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 up against so much so mm-hmm. just a huge huge congratulations do you guys feel like there's anything either in your interpersonal relationships or within the business that you're really looking forward to um going into your 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 year two yeah i mean i think you know the biggest hurdle i think for us is um our size we're little like we are truly independently owned and operated not yeah. many places can say like really not many places can say that right um you know kelly and steve like they're they are the investor like they're they don't have a bunch of people to answer to which gives us a lot of freedom in how we do things yeah um but it also is scary because mm-hmm. we're watching that, you know, if you watch this industry, you open up a newspaper every week, like our regulatory body's got some issues. Mm. Um, so, you know, you're navigating these things every day that are just like so mind blowingly difficult and trying to wrap your head around it and, and watching the market change rapidly, change rapidly changing. Like every week is some new shit that we got to deal with. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, it, 
it remains to be seen how that irons out because it's a it's a maturing market. Like if you if you follow any kind of economics, it's like, yeah, yeah well, th- yep, this is what happens. Mm-hmm. This is what it does. And it's doing that right now. And I think that there's so much money that has been dumped into it over the years. Um, and so many places, especially large, large, large places were like, oh, well, yeah, well, we're going to plan for this to always be like this. Mm. And it's like, well, guess what? It's not like that anymore. And so I think that that you know, it's terrifying because it's just a shifting market. Yeah. But I think it puts us in a re- really unique place where we are to be small and nimble and independent mm-hmm. and be able to make decisions based on what we think is best for this company. Yeah. Um, and hopefully that means we come out stronger for it. But, you know, it's it's wild out there right now. We're seeing it on the vendor side, the grow side, like yeah. anybody. It's just it's a really rapidly like changing industry. Um, and hopefully some of that change involves some of the regulations that like it's mind blowing. If yeah. you ever want to really knock yourself out, read some of the regulations and the details of it, because it's just it's really illogical, absurd and illogical. And and we have to we, we don't have wiggle room with that. We got to make sure we're on top of it. So but what's nice is that we do have that. We are like all so close as a team. And I do appreciate that everyone has like my best interest too. like. Everyone's got my back, but I have everyone's back too, or Emma yeah. and I do. It's and not I feel some like nameless it's kind face of what somewhere. Has, yeah. <laughs> it has made us authentic in that sense that, yeah. you know, we're like truly a team and a family and it's, it's awesome. Yeah. And it's it is like being independent. It isn't just like this weird owner somewhere off in a different state that it's like, I think all of us feel very deeply. It's like when we make a decision, it's like it doesn't affect some random persons it, it's like it's, it's, her, it's her she's sitting right here like we, we it's it's this could have an impact on her family and so we all take that very much to heart and i think that you don't see that in big companies often it's like oh whatever they got billions they'll just right. figure it out like it doesn't yeah. matter um and we, it's not the vibe here yeah. we're, we're all like no like well, this is deeply personal to yeah. us because it's deeply personal to her and and we we take that to heart so it's hard that's awesome. Thank you guys so much for Thank doing you. this. Thank you so much. For doing it. It, was it was super so fun. fun. You got it. It was fun. Did I tell you? Did I tell you? I'm not going to sell you a bag of beans, baby. So good. It was also both of their first times doing podcasts. And I'm, Emma, if you're listening to this, I'm still, I'm on you about starting your own podcast. I think you got it in you. And, you know, with all of your spare time, but I, yeah, my whole body is lit up. It was such a beautiful conversation and really, uh, just a cool way to connect. And I feel like I'm often in my work in this place where I'm either working with women a little bit like 10 years younger than me or like 10 years older than me. And there's so much interesting information to gleam from those behind you and those ahead of you. And this conversation absolutely proved that. So please, we will link all of their things here. If you're in the Boston area, go and check them out. Tell them that I sent you. Uh, And yeah, check them out, support them. Uh, I really hope that this kind of gave you a new perspective, maybe opened some, uh, I don't know, thoughts for you around cannabis or plant-based medicine in general that maybe you hadn't considered. Even if you're somebody you're like, oh no, it makes me paranoid, never liked it, whatever. But just maybe even opening up your own awareness around your judgment of other women, specifically of moms, or just really of anyone in general that's partaking in it that perhaps, you know, it's like, yeah. Anyway, we talked about it in the episode. I could go on about it forever um, because I don't like hypocrites. You're right. So I just, uh, I think it was a really beautiful episode and I'm so grateful for y'all for listening. So as always, I'm Rachel LaForce. I'm so grateful for you coming and showing up for me in this podcast every week. I can't even tell you how much it means to me to have all of you here listening and growing and doing your own work and going into your communities and doing this great work. Uh, if you find that this podcast is helpful for you and you're really enjoying uh, all of this and kind of looking forward to it, do you know that I have a Substack? Mama's got a Substack, baby. It's only nine ninety nine a month. Yeah, I know. $9.99 a month. A foot long is now more expensive, okay? That's how cost effective this is, okay? So it's $9.99 a month, and each week comes with additional bonus options. Sometimes I do just a bonus episode. Sometimes there's guided meditations, extra card pulls, maybe just a full energy read. Uh, sometimes depending, like this one would be fun 
you know, of like things about being an entrepreneur, things to think about, things to consider, like 10 things I wish I knew be before I became an entrepreneur. So there's so much uh, information and it will always, what I love about the way that we've set it up is most of the time it will always relate back to the episode. So that way, you know, especially at 10 bucks a month, <laughs> I mean, might as well be free. We, uh, you know, if there's an episode that like maybe you don't connect with as much, then you don't feel like, oh, I got to go get my money's worth and log into this thing to whatever. It's like, all right, cool. If there's two episodes out of the month that you feel really connected to and that bonus material is there for you 10 bucks is a motherfucking steal okay uh support me <laughs> i need i need help um no but i'm really excited for that to to grow and see all of you in that space because one of the other things that we offer on Substack is we're going to be doing regular Q and A's. So uh, we're going to figure out how to do it where we'll be doing them live and you guys can either submit questions early. We can do a breakout groups and actually being able to connect because that's the entire point of why I do all of this. So really bringing us all into the fold and really being able to connect on that level. So go and check that out. Also, you can join for free. So there's, you know, free options as well. So please go and check that out. Uh, I'm getting ready to like kind of cool it for the summer. So no show announcements or anything else like that. Uh, and we've got our studio that's opening here in Atlanta coming up in August, which is super exciting. So if you're in Atlanta, get at me. I've got a studio that you can come to all of our fun events. You can book your own event there. Lots coming up. But for now, I'm so grateful uh, to you for being here and doing the work and listening. Uh, go check out Emma and Kelly. And for now, take care of you. Love you, mean it. Time, weather, and... Always.